Hello everybody, Bradley Sword here, the Pack Prof, and today we're going to take another look into trying to set a high score for a game level of our choosing. Um, the difference here in between this video and the previous video I have made is that we're going to use a persistent object in order to maintain the high score instead of global variables. And like I said, generally global variables are not truly object oriented uh, when it comes to the paradigms that we use in the modern day world. You know, globals is kind of a thing in the past, so we're going to use an object to store the data instead. So let's take a look at what I already have built for us and then what to build off of, and then we'll make it work. We actually shouldn't take too long to, to set up this time around. So here is my level one button. I click on it, it takes me to the game level. I'd love to show the high score here, which we'll do in a couple minutes here. Click there. And this is a very simple, almost like a clicky game kind of way. Just click, 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 keep the score up here. And then every time I complete the level, I come back, and theoretically, the highest score should be stored and displayed here when I get there. So do it again, you know, one more time. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, like I said, the, the button itself just takes me to the next room. The, the add to score, I just click and I just add one to the score. Uh, level one complete right now just takes me back to the main menu. We'll fix that up in a couple minutes. And then the gameplay score controller just displays the score on the screen. Uh, just does, you know, instead of putting it into a different object, it's done on its, you know, on its own there. And that's pretty much it. So, so we're going to set up a persistent object to make our our high score work here. So I'm going to create an object. I have personally come over the years to call it game data. Get data. Game data. That's game data object. That's just what I've done. And I OK that because I want to make sure I put it in the room to start off because, my goodness, I forget all the time. So there I go. So I like to use the little blue, the little blue circle with the question mark. Some people like to put sprites in there, like, but that's just how I do things. I always put my controller objects near the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Okay, so I have that. I can come back now. And the key here to make this work is I need to make this persistent. Meaning, uh, because normally when you go from room to room, every object in your room is destroyed, and then in the new room, everything is created. But a persistent object sticks around from room to room. It doesn't get destroyed in the same normal manner. And that's what we need, because we're going from room to room, from main menu to level to level to other level, back to main menu, in order to, you know, to play the game. And in the process, then, it needs to maintain that data. So inside of here, in a create event, is where I'm going to set the high score information. Oops, sorry. So here we go. So I'm just going to call it high score level 1. And I'm going to copy that just so I don't screw up, because when you're typing stuff in, if you're one character off, then then you might as well be a million characters off. So OK that. Set the value to 0, because the score should be 0 when I start. Cool, there we go. So then now the button itself, I'm going to take over the draw event. And just the normal draw event will do here. And now, because I'm in here, I have to make sure I do things right. I'm taking over for Game Maker, so I better know what I'm doing. So i got to do draw self, because if I don't do that, then it won't draw the sprite for the button. And it'll just turn invisible. I mean, if I had a dime for every time I've heard what happened, why did my sprite go invisible, that's exactly what's happening. So then after that, I'm going to set the color, oops, sorry, wrong one, set the color to just say black, to draw, and then I'm going to draw a variable. And what I'm going to draw is, it's over here, it's called game data is my, is my object dot high score level one. And where do I want to draw it? It's all relative to where the button is, and I, I remember from doing this a few times over already today. 350 and 45 is where I want to go. So then hit and play on this guy. There's my zero. So I click on it, I play the game, I come back. There's no code to change it yet. But yeah, the good news is it doesn't crash and it displays a value on the screen. So cool. Stage one complete. So stage two then, when I complete the level, is just a pretty simple if statement. So before I change rooms, I'll just throw the if statement in and uh, write down here. So I will say if my score is greater than, 
I wish they'd put that in the middle. But anyway, so if score was greater than uh, game data dot high score level one, then I'm gonna set that variable. Oh, no, wait a minute. Where do you go? Oh, it's up here. Sorry. Okay, so if if here, pop it in and go with it. I'm gonna set the score or set the game data dot high level score equal to score. And that's it. I mean that is really the whole thing. Because that love that thing is persistent. As long as you've created it and you know up front, you'll never lose that game data object because you're never destroying it. And now you can maintain data. So there's my zero. I click, I add, 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 four, I come back, and there's my four. It's maintained that data inside of the game data object. So there's eight, up to eight, and now if I put back to four, because it's not bigger than the eight, it stores the eight. And it just, you know, it just keeps on going. How you know what is the highest score? Cool. And that is pretty much it. So um, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.